Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Clay Guillory. I'm the founder and CSO of Titan Robotics. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about hybrid manufacturing. So additive and subtractive capabilities on the same industrial 3D printing platform. So today, the quick agenda, uh, we're going to talk about Titan Robotics, uh, some of the capabilities of our technologies, uh, the advantages, and then some of the applications that go along with that. Uh, we'll discuss milling strategies. Uh, we're going to talk about workflows and how to get this part from a concept to a finished product. And we'll discuss a few case studies, and then we're going to have a live Q&A. So Titan Robotics, uh, you know, we are a production added manufacturing solutions provider, enabling customers to implement 3D printing into production. So we are a all-encompassing solutions provider. Uh, you know, we design and manufacture large format industrial 3D printers here in Colorado Springs. Uh, they include a fully heated chamber. And now we have added the capability of having additive and subtractive capabilities on the same platform. Uh, the tool heads we offer for printing are pellet extrusion, hybrid pellet plus filament extrusion, as well as dual pellet extrusion. We offer manufacturing on demand, so we can have the capability to print parts for customers, uh, either for their own use or for, to prove out their applications. Uh, we offer materials integration and testing, so we have a full lab here to be able to uh, test prints and optimize and um, you know pull samples. Uh, we also offer consulting on 3D printing strategies designed for additive and application development. So production applications. Uh, to get a part into production, you have to have three very big important aspects covered. So the part cost has to be very low. You know, you have to be able to compete with injection molding as far as the cost goes. Uh, system reliability, the utmost uptime is always critical. Downtime is more <laughs> costly than uptime in production applications. And part performance. There's a lot of things that go into designing a part for additive, but it really comes down to the requirements of the application. So we help customers with design for additive. Um, we help them develop their print processes. So, for example, how fast they need to print it, um, you know, to be able to hit certain metrics and how to cool the material as well. Um, we offer a lot of material selections. Uh, we know what works very well for additive and what doesn't. Um, part performance, we know how to choose a material for the part performance. Uh, surface finish, we now have the capability of using, uh, you know, a very small nozzle as well as a very large nozzle. And we can also come back and machine the part after it's done. Uh, part accuracy, uh, depending on what the requirements are for the application, um, kind of depends on what the nozzle size selected and uh, if it even requires uh, post machining at all. Uh, in production setting, you know that everything has to be reproducible and it has to be the same part over and over again. And that is what our machines are all about. So, um, you know, our flagship model is the Atlas. Uh, we do offer custom machines, but um, the standard Atlas. Uh, you know, you can have a pellet extruder, hybrid. Uh, you can also just have a filament extruder on there. Uh, the Atlas H is our heavy duty machine that enables the capability of having two tool heads. So dual pellet extrusion, hybrid. Um, and then now the Atlas HS, which is pellet plus spindle or pellet plus filament and spindle. Capabilities. So Titan Robotics is one of the leaders in pellet extrusion technology. We've been doing this for a while. Uh, the platforms we're going to focus on today is the Atlas HS 2.5 and the Atlas HS 3.6. So the build volumes are 42X, 42Y, 48Z for the 2.5 and 50X, 50Y, 72Z for the 3.6. The nozzle sizes we can use are anywhere from 0.6 millimeters, which compares with filament quality, uh, all the way up to nine millimeters, which is a huge bead of plastic. The extrusion rates that our machines can hit are anywhere from zero to 30 pounds an hour, and that depends on the material. Uh, the most common is really anywhere between two to 10 pounds an hour while printing. Uh, pellet extrusion, the you know, biggest advantage is that the print speed is so much faster. You don't have to worry about melting a filament in, uh, you know, a filament of plastic. You can get a much higher throughput with pellets. Uh, so the print speeds are greatly increased. Uh, you can make parts in hours versus days or weeks. Pellet cost versus filament cost is about a 10 times reduction, uh, depending on the filament that you're utilizing. 
this is huge for production applications because you're now competitive with injection molding costs for pellets. Uh, we have printed hundreds of different pellet formulations, and we're going to go through some of that right here. So high performance pellet materials, uh, you know, with pellets, you can highly fill the materials with carbon fiber or glass fiber. Um, some of the all-star materials that we utilize here are polycarbonate, uh, you know, Ultim, ABS, and PEKK. And those are all the way up to 30, and we've even printed up to 50% carbon fiber filled materials. Flexible materials, uh, some of the TPUs, TPEs that you see on the market, we can print much softer uh, durometer materials because we're not limited to a filament that gets bound up in the extruder. Some of the standard materials we use are PLA and ABS. Uh, we also have a polypropylene that works very well in the unfilled as well as filled form. Uh, and then of course, PETG. Some of the novel approaches you can use with pellet extrusion is gradient transition. So for materials that are compatible, uh, they can be transitioned from one to the next, uh, as well as in situ blending of different materials and different colors. Uh, you can kind of garage blend stuff or you can choose the color you'd like to have. So today we're gonna focus on the capabilities of our milling option. So we have chosen a variable speed spindle and that's from zero to 18,000 RPMs. Uh, that is all options that you can choose in the HMI. Uh, we have a tool changer that carries up to six tools and the tool size is up to quarter inch diameter. Uh, we have an automatic tool center point sensor. So that'll align the tool for you and check for wear and uh, a chip collection system so you don't get chips everywhere inside of the printer. So the Z-step heights, depending on your tool, uh, you know, anywhere from zero to 100 millimeters. And that is important when you're using this for in situ printing and machining. So some of the advantages and applications of our machines uh, in added advanced subtractive capabilities, you have the ability to print very fast with pellet extrusion, but come back and machine it quickly for a very accurate surface finish. So there's no more post-processing or labor involved uh, whenever you machine the part in the machine. This improves the end use of the parts. So the smooth surface, uh, you end up getting a very tight tolerance, uh, you know, comparable to a machined part. Uh, this also allows for reduced costs for the customer. So the capital expenditure savings on having two capabilities in the same platform, you don't have to buy a mill and a 3D printer, it's all in one. And this is also using the lowest cost feedstock possible, which is pellets. Some of the applications we've used this for is tooling, molds, patterns, jigs and fixtures, as well as end use parts. And we see these industries here being able to take advantage of this. So here are some of the milling strategies that we can use with our machines. So there's three milling strategies. One is three axis milling post printing. If the geometry allows, the print can be machined entirely after the part is completed. So you have to have a draft and you know enough clearance for the tool to get in to all surfaces that are required to be cut. Um, three axis milling in situ to printing. And that is printing a few layers, coming back and machining them, printing another few layers, coming back and machining them all the way up to the top of the build platform. Uh, five axis milling post printing. So you can print your part and you can machine in certain areas that you can put tooling balls in. And those tooling balls can be touched off with a five axis machine. And then you can get all the five axis contours that you would need for your final part. And so that's just using like, you know, a three axis index base essentially. Um, there is the, the flow of how these, <laughs> what strategy to use. And uh, that is, you know, you have your net CAD model. Is it capable of being three axis machined? Is, you know, do the geometries allow for the tool to get into all surfaces that need to get cut? Um, if the answer is no, then you print your part and then you have areas where you can touch off on, on the five axis uh, with tooling balls. Uh, if the answer is yes, and you do have the capability to machine it all with a three axis mill, uh, you know, is it less than four inches? Because really most geometries after printing are limited to four inches because that's how long the tool can be. Uh, if the answer is no, then you would need to print and machine, print and machine all the way up and, you know, as an in-situ milling process. So the workflow, as it goes, uh, you would print your part 
and you got to make sure to over extrude because you have to have a fully dense part with very minimal voids. Uh, you would come back and machine the roughing pass. So that can be in one direction and then you can come back and machine the finishing pass in the other direction or with a separate tool. So quick case study on uh, post milling after the part is completed. So you have your oversized CAD model which you print to. So you can add an extra one or two millimeters of material. You slice that and simplify 3D. While you're printing it, you over extrude. So you force more material than what typically would be there. And you can see in the photos how it's a little bit over extruded. Uh, that enables that enables you to not have any voids uh, or porosity that you have to fight with when you come back and machine it. Uh, and then you would program the CAM toolpath in Fusion 360 and do a final cut. So you can see here, this was about a two and a half hour print and uh, about six pounds of material. And the machine time with two separate tools was quarter inch flat mill, eighth inch ball mill, and it only took about two hours. Here's another case study of in situ milling. Uh, this part was about 14 pounds to print. It took about seven hours. Uh, and what we did was use the oversized CAD model. Uh, we sliced it in Simplify 3D. So we printed it in the heated chamber and while it stayed hot, we compensated for the thermal expansion uh, with another CAD file, came back and machined it, and then resumed printing on the next section at interval two, came back and machined that, and then finished the part off. And as you can see in the scan, it, it was extremely accurate. So being able to compensate for the thermal expansion based on the material and the uh, chamber temperature, you can get an extremely accurate part right off of the machine once it's all cooled down. All right, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now in the chat. Uh, we really appreciate your time and uh, hope to speak to you guys soon.